Hi everybody. My name is Lorelai Liu and this video is about my recovery journey from chronic fatigue syndrome or CFS. My only intention of making in making this video is to hopefully help someone else. I will discuss my illness, my recovery, and explain briefly what brain retraining is about and some supporting research. I'm not affiliated with any of the treatments that I'm discussing and any research or treatment that I refer to are listed in the video description. I was registered physical therapist for over 24 years before I became bedridden with CFS. My son had been born with multiple life-threatening allergies and developed many health problems. And the strain of parenting him eventually took its toll on me. I became ill and my symptoms worsened so much that by 2015, I was bedridden. I could only get out of bed 20 minutes at a time, three times a day. I had extreme fatigue, dizziness, headaches, and brain fog. I couldn't take care of myself and I held the walls walking from my bed to the bathroom. I couldn't text, read, or watch TV, and even speaking was exhausting. I was terrified that I would not improve. With brain retraining and five years later, I'm living a full life and, I'm, and retraining to return to work. I'm dedicating this video to people suffering with CFS, but particularly those who are very ill. I remember what it's like and I have so much compassion for your suffering. Also, it is thought that many long haul COVID patients have CFS. So I'm hoping that my story can help some of those people as well. Recent research has shown that the mind and body are much more closely linked in health than previously thought. I use two main brain retraining programs on my recovery. Number one is the Gupta program, and number two is the Dynamic Neural Retraining System, which is DNRS for short. As well as being a physical therapist, I have a Master of Science in Cellular and Molecular Biology. I did the hourly brain retraining process every day for over three and a half years until I became symptom free. Now I know this sounds like a long time, but I could see real progress within the first six weeks in my symptoms and what I was able to do. I believe that I am outside of the normal for recovery time and surveys of patients with CFS with these programs report a range of six months to two and a half years for recovery. For CFS patients, there's a lot of talk about the energy envelope which, is, which means staying within your, with, within your energy capability and pacing activities. What these brain retraining programs did for me was to increase my energy envelope more quickly than without and to greatly reduce the consequences if I strayed out of my training zone. Recent research has shown how much our, our minds can influence our bodies. This is not saying that CFS and other complex chronic illnesses are made up in our minds and that there's nothing physically wrong with us. On the contrary, recent research has shown that we can influence our body's malfunctioning physiology with our minds. And I have three examples of some research. Uh, the first is the Gupta program, which was studied that's my reference there. Um, in fibromyalgia patients, it was published in 2020. And the fibromyalgia patients reported a decrease in pain, a 37% decrease in how fibromyalgia negatively impacted their lives, over a 40% decrease in anxiety and depression, and a 47% increase in perceived health after doing the program for eight weeks. At three months, patients reported less pain, 
improvements in clinical severity and improvements in quality of life. So that's the first, the first paper I wanna support the brain retraining process with. And the second one is that a systematic review published in 2021 found that fatigue severity was reduced in chronic fatigue symptom, chronic fatigue syndrome patients using mind-body interventions in nine out of the 12 surveyed research studies. And my last one is that um, ASHAR just published in September of 2021. Um, he used a process called pain reprocessing theory therapy, sorry. And in this study, 66% uh, of the participants in the treatment group that underwent the pain reprocessing therapy um, who had suffered back pain for an average of over 10 years were pain-free or nearly pain-free after four weeks compared to 10% in the treatment as usual group. And treatment effects were still as effective one year later. So that's just some of the research documenting how we can influence our bodies with our minds. Now CFS is a complex chronic disease. Um, symptoms include uh, severe fatigue, pain, disturbed sleep, brain dysfunction, and problems with the autonomic nervous system regulation. Now the autonomic nervous system is um, the parts of our nervous system that automatically influences heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, digestion, hormonal regulation, body temperature, and the immune system and mitochondrial function are also affected in um, CFS and there are ways that the autonomic nervous system is thought to influence those. Now the two main divisions of the autonomic nervous system are the sympathetic nervous system, which activates the fight, flight, fear response, okay? And the parasympathetic nervous system, which regulates and activates the rest, heal, digest response. So, when confronted by a threat, like a tiger or, you know, a, a runaway bicycle, um, the fight flight response increases your heart rate, your breathing rate and blood glucose levels and blood pressure. And blood is diverted to the muscles and away from the digestive system and away from the brain. And hormones such as cortisol are released allowing you to react appropriately to the threat, you know, to run away from the tiger or to fight it. Now, cortisol has been shown to suppress the immune system, suppress wound healing, increase brain fog, and decrease memory. So it is thought that with repeated or prolonged stimulation of the fear, fight, flight response, the body becomes unbalanced and illnesses such as CFS and fibromyalgia and much more can occur. So the hypothesis is chronic fatigue syndrome is from the brain and body being stuck in a sustained fight, flight, fright, stress response, which disrupts our body. Um, Dr. Hansen wrote in 2013 that when the stress hormone cortisol gets released, it takes time for the body to metabolize it. And so it'll affect the body for 20 to 30 minutes after the trigger. Also, over time, cortisol damages another brain structure called the hippocampus, causing it to shrink. Now the hippocampus's job is to dampen the primitive brain's response to fear and stress. So as the hippocampus shrinks with prolonged cortisol, 
the brain gets more easily triggered to stress. So a sensitized brain to fear or stress today will lead to an even more sensitized brain tomorrow and even more the day after that. So Gupta states that for patients with chronic fatigue syndrome, symptoms worsen over time as the brain starts becoming hypervigilant and starts reacting sooner and more easily with increasing numbers of triggers. So brain retraining programs teach our brains to respond differently to our triggers and thereby heal our bodies. Um, in their model, the CFS brain is stuck in a fear, fight, flight, stress response. And um, the mind can be used to turn this response off. Now, changing brain structure and changing brain organization is termed neuroplasticity, so that the brain is plastic, we can change it. So the programs report that the stuck fear loop can be rewired and much like stro stroke patients, learning to walk again. So there's uh, five sort of main principles of the, of the retraining programs. And I'm just gonna flash it up here. So five main components to brain retraining programs. And I'll talk about each of these. Uh, so the first one is neuroplasticity. The second is mindfulness. The third is cognitive behavior therapy. The fourth is meditation. And number five is elevation of your mood. So the first one is neuroplasticity. So the neuroplasticity approach uses uh, self-awareness to monitor your thoughts, your feelings, your actions daily to notice when a fear or stress response is triggered. And then you can then condition yourself to change your subconscious physical response. Now this is kind of a tricky idea. So I'm gonna use um, Dr. Pavlov's experiment to explain this approach. So in Dr. Pavlov's experiment, he um, rang a bell and presented food to dogs. And then he measured the dog's salivation response. And after a training period, he found that the dogs salivated with just the bell. They had wired that so they would have a subconscious physical response to just the ringing of the bell. So in a hypersensitive brain to fear and stress, more triggers become bells and they cause a subconscious overdrive of the fear physiology of the fear response and thus a downward spiral of our body's physiology and function. So neuroplasticity uses self-directed conditioning of changing our subconscious fear overdrive. So what did this look like for me? Um, thoughts about my symptoms or any activity would be a fear trigger for me. I would monitor my body, my sitting time, my standing time, the environment, practically everything. And as I was working on increasing my activity, I would notice and stop the fear and worry response by flooding my brain with positive visualizations of doing the activity without any issues. And while also and, in, and increasing the activity time. So I would do my standing, I would visualize standing, you know, at a party, and I would gradually increase the amount of time that I stood while I was doing these visualization exercises. I would distract my brain from noticing and worrying about symptoms such as fatigue or dizziness. And the goal is to increase the body's physical ability to do an activity while simultaneously decreasing any associated fe fears about it. So you're literally teaching your brain to ignore the Pavlov bell that triggers the fear response. Okay, so, um, so number two is mindfulness, is another technique proving to be beneficial to health and another cornerstone of these brain retraining programs. Studies have found positive effects 
of mindfulness on decreasing pain, improving the immune response, cardiac disease, and other issues. In a study by Carlson in 2015, uh, Dr. Carlson found that cancer patients who used mindfulness, <laughs> sorry, mindfulness meditation were actually able to increase the length of their DNA, specifically the telomeres, the ends of the DNA, which prevent DNA damage. So that's pretty amazing how you can use your mind to increase the length of your DNA. So what is mindfulness? You're probably wondering. Um, it's about taking a step back from being your thoughts and instead being the awareness of your thoughts and also being in the present moment. So our brains evolved primarily to survive. So the brain has a built-in negative bias, which has it continually looking for danger and activating the fear response. So the brain's prim primitive response looks for danger in two main categories. Um, number one is physical danger, see? And number two is social exclusion danger being kicked out of the tribe. So I'll explain those. So the brain is scanning for um, physical danger. And this is in relation to health and safety issues such as do I have food, water, shelter, money, pain, illness, and looks for threats to physical safety. Is there a tiger in the room? Am I safe? Am I healthy? And number two is social exclusion danger. And what that means is that we want to, be, we want to be seen as belonging to a tri our tribe because the survival success rate of a group is much greater than that of an individual. So our brains are evolutionarily programmed to want to belong to our tribe and to be seen as a worthwhile member. So hence, our brains are wired to check constantly for approval, critique our own behavior, and ask, am I good enough? Am I worthy? And this normal checking and rechecking activates the fear and stress response. Now, the fear overdrive in chronically ill patients further reinforce the body's sick physiology. The, the fear overdrive causes person perseveration of symptoms, that means constantly ruminating and looping about symptoms, but also uh, further triggered by worries about money, lifelong illness, independence, fears about usefulness and worthiness, and the primitive brain that activates our sympathetic nervous system, our fear, fight, flight, stress response, distorts our perspectives and focuses on the negative. So it may also push patients beyond their limits to overachieve, lead to approval seeking behavior and put their own self care last. So mindfulness focuses on being in the present moment. It relaxes the nervous system by disengaging the primitive brain from ruminating about the past and constantly trying to scan the future for danger. And the goal of mindfulness is to examine that constant dialogue in the brain and learn to let go, not only of fear and worry, but negative self-dialogue and self-judgment. So for myself, this sort of 24 seven monitoring of my feelings, thoughts and actions, and being in the present moment made me realize how much my primitive brain had distorted my perception in the beginning, I noticed I had fearful thoughts about my health, about my symptoms, my self-worth constantly. And stopping these thoughts and being at peace and acceptance would calm my nervous system down and ultimately normalized or helped normalize my body's physiology. And so number three is um, the programs also use an element of cognitive behavior therapy um, to retrain the brain and calm the stress response. Now there are literally thousands of articles of how chronic behavior therapy improves chronic pain and many studies show improvement in fibromyalgia patients. Um, 
Chronic behavior therapy teaches skills such as countering unhealthy behaviors, such as jumping to conclusions and taking things personally, uses breathing techniques and self-compassion, gratitude and processing of emotions rather than stuffing them down. Um, so I would use these CPT skills daily to counter responses that triggered my fear and worry response. And number four is brain retraining programs also use meditation to heal our bodies. Now there are hundreds of research articles on the benefits of meditation and how it changes our body physiology. So in addition to the one hour of daily brain retraining exercises, I would also spend about 10 to 20 minutes daily in meditation. And finally, the brain retraining programs advocate elevation of your mood with laughter and joyful activities. And there is good research showing how laughter, music, and joy is beneficial to both our minds and our bodies and helps normalize our brain neurochemistry. So in addition to the daily brain retraining joyful visualizations, I participated in laughter yoga sessions multiple times a week. And many times I would come into a laughter session with brain fog and headaches and dizziness. And by the end of the 25 minute session, my brain symptoms would disappear. So um, that's the five main principles of the brain retraining programs that I've talked about. So ultimately this journey has been a gift. Um, after working with the programs, I now have a full life. I have become aware not only of fear and stress about my own health, but I've also uncovered deeper negative core beliefs about my self-worth and replaced them with beliefs about self-care, self-love, being present in the moment, being happy, and being grateful. I would be so grateful if you could share my story with anyone who you think would benefit from it. I am going to do a mini series of YouTube videos regarding mind-body research. For those who have a fear and worry, fight, flight, stress, overdrive response, um, sometimes a little science and a little research can really help calm this system down. And I love research, um, so, and sharing always makes things better. So um, you can hit subscribe if you want alerts about upcoming videos. And in conclusion, I'm so grateful for my new life. And I hope the sharing of my story will be helpful to someone else. Uh, for those who wish to try the brain retraining programs, the Gupta program is currently offering a one year money back guarantee. And the DNRS program is offering a six month guarantee. I do have videos about laughter yoga and uh, brain retraining tips on my YouTube channel. I wish you joy, peace, love, and laughter. And you can send me any questions or comments to my Facebook page. Um, message me on Facebook. Um, it's uh, Lorelai Lu. So thank you so much for your time.